Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video, we're going to be solving a worked example on the law of equi margin principle. In the last video, we discussed about what the equi margin principle was and we discussed that the equi margin principle is basically applicable when we are trying to find the optimum combination or the optimum bundle of goods with a limited fixed income, which is our budget constraint. And we said that if we have a budget constraint and then we need to uh, find the optimum bundle of goods that the consumer is going to buy so that he can maximize his total utility, then we are going to do that according to what the EQ margin principle says. And we studied that the EQ margin principle says that a consumer will be able to maximize his total utility from a given income if the maturity per dollar of good A is equal to the marginal utility per dollar of good B, right? And we studied that the marginal utility per dollar of good A would be, would be we'll, we'll find that out by um, dividing the marginal utility of A with the price of A and the marginal utility of B with the price of B. So a consumer would basically be buying a such number of goods of A and B or a bundle of goods or such amount of good A and such amount of good B where the marginal utility um, of good A divided by the price of A equals the marginal utility of B divided by the price of B. So basically what we mean is that the last dollar he spends, do not remember this, basically what this means is that the last dollar he spends on good A and the last dollar he spends on good B, so the marginal utility um, is equal uh, from that last dollar, is equal to the marginal utility that he receives by spending the last dollar on good B as well. So if I have, let's say, if I have, uh, let's say, two dollars left, right? Uh, if I have two dollars left after buying a certain amount of goods A and B, and then I am choosing between A and B, and then let's see, and then let's say I buy a one unit of A, and that gives me a certain amount of margin utility per dollar. Let's say X is the amount, and let's say I buy another unit, and then I only have the I have left with the money to buy a unit of good B. So the amount of utility that I will derive from buying that unit of good B, that would be the, that would exactly be equal. So margin utility, this is the margin derived from good A, from consuming the last unit of A, and then the last unit of B from consuming the last unit of B, the margin utility derived from the consuming the last unit of B, the, they both are equal. So that is basically what the equi margin principle is telling us and just I'm going to be solving this through a worked example so that you guys can actually clearly understand instead of just learning what the formula is saying. Now guys remember that when we are talking about the equi margin principle what we are saying is that let's say we take we take uh, you know two goods let's say we take good A and then we take good B it could be anything anything could be good A or good B and then we, and then we are saying that there's an income constraint or a budget constraint of $16 so let's say that we have $16 we and that is our $16 is our limited income and we have to spend $16 on buying a certain quantity of good A and a certain quantity of good B now Obviously, if I am left with 16, if I only have $16 in my pocket and I need to buy good A and good B, so an, a rash, how would a rational consumer think basically? This is what, a, this, is what this concept is telling us. So for instance, I've, I've, I've drawn a table and I've written, you know, a good A. First of all, remember that this is, the, all these are the units and the marginal utilities of good A and these are on the right hand side, you'll see the units and the marginal utility of good B. Now, you guys must remember the price throughout this video so that you can actually remember and get back to the calculation. So what I've written is that I've said that the price of good A is basically $4. That's the price of good, way, good A and I want you to remember this price, okay? So when I'm doing the calculations, you can actually relate to it. And the price of good B is basically $2. So the price of A is $4, the price of B is $2. So the first unit of A yields me a margin utility of 120, the second yields me 80, 80 utils, the third unit of A yields me 40 utils of utility, fourth 32, fifth 16 and sixth 4. And here I have measured the utility in terms of utils, right? Similarly, the first unit yields me a utility of 30, the second yields me a utility of 20 and so on and so forth. And the sixth unit of good B yields me a margin utility of 2 utils. Like I said, I am measuring utility in utils here, right? Now guys, remember that if I want to, if I, if I ask you a question that, you know, you have $16 and then what is the first unit of, uh, you know, how many units or should you buy good A or should you buy good B? If I ask you this question that should you buy A or should you buy B? So what you will do is that you will say, okay, fine. You know what? 
the margin utility of A is 120, the first unit of A is 120 as compared to the margin utility of good B which is 30. So obviously the first unit that we should buy is of A, right, and not of B. Second, then you'll say, okay, now we should buy, now let's talk about the second unit. So the second unit of margin utility of is of uh, good A is 80, while the, uh, while as if you compare that with um, the margin utility of good B, uh, that's 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 30 units because we, we are going to take the second unit of good B buy because technically what we're saying is if you're if you have bought good A the first unit of good A so the second unit that we want to buy we need to decide either we go for A or B so the second unit would either be the second unit of good A or the first unit of good B because we haven't bought good B yet, good B yet right so we will be comparing this margin utility of good A with the margin utility of with the first unit of margin utility of good B so what I'm saying is basically the first unit is basically of good A that we have bought and then what we're saying is that I'm saying that the second unit of uh, good A is basically 80 utils while and if I compare it with, with, the, with the utility from the first unit of good B that's 30 so I'll be like okay fine you know what I should buy good A again and then I compare this with this and I should be like okay fine so all my money should in this case and then I'll compare 32 with 30 so I'm like okay fine so if I need to buy if I want to spend my money on buying good A or good B and if I if I if I look at this margin utility for good A and I compare that with the margin utility of good B obviously the margin utility of good A is giving me uh, you know good A is giving me more utility as compared to good B right so the, I'll be like okay fine the first unit I'll buy of good A the second unit I'll buy of good A the third unit I'll buy of good A and the fourth unit I'll buy of good A as well since I told you that the good A is basically worth $4, so I'll spend $4 here, $4 here, $4 here, and $4 here. And, and as a result of that, what I've done is that I've spent all my $16 because my income was $16 here. So I've spent all $16 and I've bought basically four units of good A. Four A means four units of good A. Now, if I look at the table and I start doing these calculations in this way, so I'll be like, okay, oh, you know what? Since good A was giving me more marginal utility as compared to the marginal utility of good B, then I should just spend, you know, you know, the first unit should be good A, the second unit should be good A, the third unit should be good A, and the fourth unit should be good A as well because, because if I bought the first unit of A, then the second unit should also be of A because that is giving me more utility than the, than this unit of B. The third unit should, should also be good A because, you know, it's giving me 40 while, you know, good B is, is, is 30. And the fourth unit should be good A because that's giving me 32 utility as compared to the utility of 30 over here. So all units should be of good A. But, you know, guys, what I am doing here is not the right way. Although it seems the right way because on the face of it, the margin utility is greater than the margin utility of good B. But there is a technical problem that I am making. So you are not supposed to do it this way. I'll, and I'll tell you the reason why. I cannot actually compare the margin utility of good A with the margin utility of good B. The reason is... I could have done that if the prices were equal. But guys, the prices aren't equal, so how can I compare the margin utility of A with the margin utility of B? I can't really compare 120 with 30. And the simple reason is, I'll tell you why. why. The simple reason is that I, if I buy the first unit of good A, that's giving me a margin utility of 120 utils, while the price that I'm paying for is $4. And if I buy the first unit of good B, that's giving me a margin utility of 30 utils, and the price of good B is $2. So. So obviously it doesn't make sense because what it means, what, what, it, what it technically means is that in order to gain a utility of 120 units, I am paying $4. So basically paying $4, incurring a marginal cost of $4 is giving me a marginal benefit of 120. And if I am saying that the first unit of good B is giving me a marginal benefit of 30, that is a marginal utility of 30 because they both are equal. So against a marginal cost of $2, right? So I can't technically compare 120 with 30 because I can't really say that this is the marginal benefit. Uh, I, I can't really say that the marginal benefit of 120 is more than the marginal benefit of 30 here. So I should buy the first unit of A because in order to gain a marginal benefit or the marginal utility of 120, I am paying $4 while in order to gain a utility of 30 or a marginal benefit of 30, I'm paying a cost I mean, that is a marginal cost, which is the price of $2. So the prices are different. And if the prices are different, then it doesn't make sense to compare 120 with 30. So what I need to do is guys, what I need to do is so what the equity margin principle says us or it teaches us is that you need to calculate the marginal utility per 
dollar and when you say that the margin utility per dollar you calculate it by dividing the margin utility with the price guys so what is going to happen is that basically we just need to simply divide the margin utility with the price of, of this of good a so basically if i divide 120 by 4 i get a margin utility per dollar of 30 here and i need to um, complete the table so 80 divided by 4 would be 20 and then 40 divided by 4 would be 10 and then 32 divided by 4 would be 8 and then this should be uh, 4 and then this should be 1. Similarly, I am going to be calculating the margin utility per dollar for good B. So margin utility per dollar for good B which will be margin utility of good B divided by the price of good B. So that should be you know 30 divided by 2 would give me so, so, basically, so basically the first unit of good A basically is giving me a utility of 30 if I pay a price of 2. So I need to understand and see that you know I, I, I if, if I want to compare good A and good B I need to come on a common ground. So, so what I and the common grounds would be the per dollar thingy. Why? Because I can now compare the margin utility per dollar with the mar of good A with the margin utility per dollar of good B. Now the comparison would make sense because now I am comparing how much marginal utility from good A per dollar spent can be compared with the marginal utility of good B per dollar spent. Initially since the prices were different so I was not able to compare per dollar amount spent since the prices were different. So 120 utility was for 4 dollars similarly 30 utility was after paying a price of 2 dollars right so it does not it did not make sense so the comparison was absurd that is why or the comparison was wrong that is why we calculate the marginal utility per dollar guys. So 30 divided by 2 would be 15, 15 neutrals a dollar, this would be, this should be 20 divided by 2, this should be, this should be 10 and then it should be 8, 4, 2 and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, right. So it makes sense. Now I have the marginal utility per dollar of, of good A as compared to the marginal utility per dollar of good B. Now before I move on to the equi margin principle there is one more thing that I need to tell you and so that you know I, I need to get this off my head so that you guys understand. Now let's see the possible combinations of good A and good B that we can buy if we have a limited income of $16. So let's say if I have $16 in my hand and I need to buy a certain amount of good A and a certain amount of good B. So what is the quantity of possible combinations that I can go for? So let's say that I can you know buy one unit of A and six units of B. Now A is worth $4 while B is worth $2. So if I buy one unit of A that means 1 times $4 would be it would mean that I am going to be spending $4 here and then 6 unit of B would mean that 1 unit of B is $2 so 6 times 2 would give me two, $12 being spent here. So 12 plus $4 in total being spent would mean that I have so, so basically it means that I have spent all my $16 in buying 1 unit of A and 6 units of B. Right, so that is one possible combination, guys. Now, another possible combination could be that I could spend money on buying two units of A and four units of B, or I could spend money in buying, let's say, three units of uh, three units of A or two units of B, or maybe four units of A and zero units of B. Okay, so let's say that if I buy two units of A and four units of B, so that would be two times uh, four dollars plus four times two dollars, since good B is worth two dollars, so that would be. 8 plus 8 again it would be 16 similarly this would be also um, this would also make up to uh, how much this would be 12 12 plus 4 12 plus 4 would be again 16 similarly 4 units of A would mean that all amount of 16 dollars is being spent in buying good A while 0 units of would be right so I have spent all 16 dollars here and can I buy 5 so I have bought 1 unit of A, 2, 3, 4 A and then 6 B, 4 B, 2 B, 0 B and then can I buy 5 units of A? I can't actually buy 5 units of A. Why? Because um, 1, A, 1 A is worth $4 times 5 units of A that gives me $20 right. So I do not have $20 I only have $16 with me so I cannot buy this combination where I say that I am going to be buying 5 units of A and 0 units of B so that is not possible. So, I've, so basically what I what I am trying to show over here is that I have listed the possible combinations. What are those possible combinations A, B, C and D and part and this E, E is not a combination because it does not make sense. You cannot buy 5 units of good A. So basically let me erase this. So basically what I have written is that I have listed down all the possible combinations of um, goods of good A and good B that I can buy from a 
given budget constraint or an income constraint of $16. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, while we are doing, so this was just to explain to you what I'm trying to say when I'm saying the possible combination. So obviously you have a limited budget of $16. You either need to buy good A or good B and you know that you, know, you have a price of $2 for good B and a price of $4 for good A. So what are the possible combinations that you can buy? So the purpose of telling you this was to just list down the various possible combinations that a consumer can buy for good A and good B so that he can actually find out the different bundle of goods that he can buy. So these are the possibilities basically that a consumer can go for if he has $16. Now what is the objective? Now the out of these four possible combinations only one combination will maximize his total utility and maximize his consumer surplus and the combination which maximizes his total utility and maximizes his consumer surplus will be the optimum combination and that combination would be the rational decision making of the consumer and that combination would result into allocative efficiency. Hence we can say that the point where the equity margin principle maximizes consumer optimality is the point of allocative efficiency simply right it's the same thing. So what we are saying is that now our next step should be that we need to figure out that out of these four combinations what is the optimum combination or what will the consumer go for? Will the consumer go for this combination, this combination, this combination, this combination? That is which combination would maximize his total utility and we will take now the help of the EP margin principle to figure that out. Now before I move on with this video you need to understand that a rational consumer would be willing to do two things. Basically if you have $16 first of all we need to find out what combination or bundle will maximize my total utility. The second of all I need to understand that what will be my total utility that will maximize my what will be that what will be the amount of total utility that will maximize my satisfaction so how much total utility will i get from the optimum combination so if i say that if i say that let's say that you know this is my optimum combination i said this is my optimum combination that how much total utility am i getting right now guys let's see how would the equi margin principle work and how would the consumer optimize his bundle of goods that is how would he use the formula that is the equi margin principle where he says that the margin utility of a over price of b equals to the margin utility of B over price of B and the point where the last dollar spent on good A which means that the last dollar spent on good A that is a margin utility per dollar of good A margin utility per dollar of from good A is equal to the margin utility per dollar of good B and how does this equity margin principle helps the consumer decide which optimum bundle is maximizing his total utility. So let's find that out from the given table. But for that, you need to click on the next video to understand that example. So I'll see you all there in the next video. Until then, take care.